rag nowadays that you can't let people have a copy of your yeah. record before it comes out. So, like when you do interviews with people or when like record reviews, it's getting tough now. It's yeah. kind of weird. And so we're really trying to figure a way that it'd make it easier on everybody. Like, you know, even if that means welding the cassette thing shut and well that's what radiohead did once they had like yeah. a, they did that thing with a little mp3 player where you got it on mp3 player and you couldn't download it and it was it was actually you know it was protected and everything like that it's a drag though i mean do you guys take no. a militant st stance towards that whole internet piracy thing or are you just a little bit like nah you know it costs us money and it's a drag well, you know i mean what's we're your... trying to figure out how to deal with it it's the first time it's really become an issue and we're putting out a record at the same time and you're like well it's, yeah it's, it's a whole new reality it's kind of we want people to hear the record when it's done yeah and sounding the best it can sound after that, as far as pirating live stuff, I love seeing bootlegs. Yeah, I mean, live bootlegs. Because is I think that's yeah. cooler than hell, man. I really do. And if somebody got a hold of some outtakes, mm. that would be cool, too. Mm. You can definitely tell which ones are new and which ones are old. In what way? What, what, how they, you know. They're more mature. Yeah, I don't know how to, to explain it. But... I mean, they're kind of a little like. They're just a little more complex and they're more aggressive than anything we've ever done. Do you think that had something to do with hanging out with Nick and Josh a little bit? Mm -mm. No, that was after I mean, the fact. No, a we... lot of the songs we wrote like a year and a half ago. Sure. But um, but no, I mean, see, it's funny because the band, we always kind of go <laughs> in many. We've always moved in a lot of directions. Yeah. So if you listen to the first record, I mean, you've got songs like Watershed, or you've got a song like I'll Stick Around, or yeah. stuff like that. That's like you know, oh, it's, it's a heavy. F Rock record too. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, yeah. aggressive. And then the, the second record, there's stuff like Wind Up, and then there's stuff like Enough Space. That's incredible, Enough Space. I remember seeing you play, you play that at the first uh, at the Somersault. You started in the Somersault oh, Festival yeah. in Melbourne back in like what it must be 1995 or something. And you started with that track, and it was just like damn. But so we've always had that like screaming crazy thing. But but we move in so many other directions that that when we go back to it, people are like, wow, this aggressive rock and roll records. And, Kind of a new vibe for you. Like, well, no, it's not. Really. Yeah, I, know. I, I don't know yeah. what people. Well, it's because the. I mean, because a lot. Of, I think a lot of people when well. they think of the band, they think of like Have Learn to Fly, or they think of Everlong, or something like that. And they Maybe don't. if they watch a lot of MTV, but if they've seen you guys live, you know, then they'll know. That, for the I mean, Joe public, it's like it's also just whatever your last record was is who you are. Yeah. He. Uh, He's worked in studios in Los Angeles for a long time and was kind of like a second engineer and engineered a bunch of records and he's more of an underground producer. What's his thing? What's his sound? What's his trademark? He's just a rock rock. Man. He's just like, he grew up listening to punk rock and yeah. death metal and, but he loves pop music too and he's just, he's a, he's a musician. He plays all instruments and yep. he understands songs and he's just great, but he's really enthusiastic. Like, you're sitting there trying to get a guitar track, and he's standing in front of you like, <laughs> air guitar right in front of you, like, yeah! I'm like, you just <laughs> me up. Get away from me. Yeah. I'm, here make, I'm making mistakes. <laughs> and when you, Your when sweat we get, is getting on. When we do a playback, dude, him and Bruce, our A&R guy, who's just as much of a dork when they listen to music, they do this It's insane, like the air guitar finals. It's you know, so I don't corny that we him. either have to leave the room or laugh the, our asses off. Mm -hmm. One by one. Why'd you call it that? It must be hard naming a record, I always imagine. It was, it's a piece of a lyric in one of the songs, and it just seemed to make sense somehow. Sure. Just through the lyrics, there's sort of a thread that runs through all the lyrics, and it just kind of... Are you a band that, like, I mean, do you guys, like, you know, hold a lot of gravity towards album names? You know, because some of your favorite albums, right, they'd be different if they were called something different. I know? think we've always had album names. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, we're a big fan of album names, to be honest. Sheet. I have to be honest, I love your music to death, but... <laughs> Thank you. No, I think I actually... Yeah, that I was actually, a stupid <laughs> inside <laughs> joke that, like, I didn't... We couldn't figure out what to... We were going to call the... It's kind the of album Undercover, right? you know? Yeah. And I know even the album cover. Oh, it's not the there's nothing yeah, left to lose. It's a little bit. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing left to lose. Well, we were saying the other day we should have called this album There's Nothing Left to Lose. It really means on this one, but... One by one's all right. I like it. It's simple and it's strong. It's just a simple Yeah. It's neutral. Yeah. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's pretty middle of the road. It's like, not embarrassing. It's, 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 it's not really bad. It's, it's just, yeah. you know, it's kind of like Zeppelin 3. <laughs>